Hi, we're going to talk about the water cycle and to do that we have to look at water systems. Um, some of the focuses we're going to look at are flows and stores of energy and matter um, as we dive into this next unit. If we're talking about water cycle, the water cycle and water systems, we should understand again what a system is. That's simply inputs, processes, and outputs. So you put something in, you change it, you shift it, or you move it, and then something different comes out. It's not always water we have to talk about. A system is really just a general term, um, and it could include lots of things like political systems even in this. So you add something in, uh, the thinking changes, there's a process, and there's an output. Maybe the person uh, goes and shares a different viewpoint. So with the water system, you put water into the system, you can move it around the planet and the oceans, and it changes, and then it evaporates, and there's a different form coming out. So the systems that we'll be looking at sort of entail all of these. NASA has a lot of beautiful visualization, visualizations of the, all their data that you can download for free. This is one of them, um, and it includes a lot of different pieces of the puzzle when we start looking at the water cycle from soil to plants to movements of uh, precipitation and clouds, etc. And just to cap off on systems, we want to revisit also what it is to have an open, closed, or isolated system. This really just involves uh, looking at energy and matter and what stays and what goes. Most systems that we talk about on the planet are open systems. So energy is coming in in the form of when we're talking about the water cycle, we're looking at light energy coming in, being converted to heat on the planet, and that heat lifting, evaporating things or pulling it out of the plants here in this case, evaporating up into the sky. What are we moving in our case when we're talking about the water cycle? It's water. So looking at water coming in and out of this system. Here's the redwood forest. And you can imagine water coming in, flowing down the streams or being evaporated up into the sky. So water is moving in and out of the system as well. And that's what that green arrow represents. A closed system would be something like a spacecraft or even the planet Earth, for example, where energy can come in and out, light and heat. In this case, you see it in the spaceship there. This is just a, a model. Um, or matter, matter, you can't let that water escape that capsule or that oxygen or that carbon dioxide. That's what you have to work with. And you can't share that with the outside environment. In that case, same as the planet Earth. We don't want to share what we have, the matter on this planet with space, yet heat and light are moving in and out. An isolated system is a bit of a, a theoretical concept. Um, really, the only isolated system uh, that you could truly talk about is the universe, because we don't necessarily have an understanding yet of the energy entering the universe or escaping the universe. We are encapsulated in all the known energy from the Big Bang, um, and that's a whole different story to go into, so we'll leave that as it is when we talk about isolated systems. That's really the one we have to talk about not many others that we can think about on this planet. So we get to the hydrologic cycle, otherwise known as the water cycle. Um, in this image, you'll start to see the, the main part of the water cycle. So it's precipitation, water falls, hits the ocean. In this case, it evaporation lifts it back up in, and then it condenses condensation in the form of clouds. That's the classic water cycle, precipitation, evaporation, condensation, moving around in a circle there. Um, you can have different stores and different flows. The arrows represent the flow of that energy moving around um, and that, that matter moving around. The, the storage is where it actually takes shape and takes hold. So clouds are a store for, for water. Oceans are a store. Lakes are a store. Um, there's lots of pieces to this puzzle when we look at the water cycle. We could get a lot more complex when we start to talk about things like evapotranspiration and how different forests, uh, different plants release the water from the leaves every single day when they open their stoma and water evaporates up into the air. Um, that's evapotranspiration. That's another movement of water. And infiltration, another movement of water when it moves into the soil, percolation as well. There's lots in this model. Um, and 
we will dive into a little bit more of those in our class, but that's the gist of it. Um, to break that down into a bit more formal language, we can really focus on flows and stores like I mentioned. Um, flows come in in a couple different categories here. Transformations are when they actually change the, the, the form, transform. So uh, water freezing, you go from liquid to solid. Water melting, solid to liquid. Sublimation, solid to gas. Um, you really change the form and you shift it. Transfers just talks about moving water from one place to another. Lots of ideas there in that list of transfer of water, moving it from a cloud to the ground. That's precipitation, that's a transfer. Those are the arrows, essentially. Um, storages, well, one interesting note here about storages is uh, close to 70% of the water on this planet is in the form of ice, uh, glaciers and ice caps. That's a huge deal when we get into other discussions and we start talking about climate change because one of the main concerns about climate change is, well, you're shifting where that water is being stored. If you melt the ice, even by one degree Celsius, remember ice, it'll melt at plus one degree over freezing. Um, so that water will move into the oceans, primarily probably move into the, as, as vapor, into clouds um, and around the atmosphere. That's gonna significantly change the frequency and level of storms that we experience on this planet. We actually, we're already seeing that. The data is there to show that. So an interesting part of the water cycle that applies to all of us. Now, I hope this helps uh, thinking about the water cycle. And I'll go back to that image. There's the classic water cycle image. If you have any questions, comment below uh, and get in touch. And hopefully we can clarify some things. Okay, thanks.